So US Agent is Marvel Snap's latest card, and I wasn't expecting much for this one, but I'll tell you right now, I had a crazy 13 and 2 run with the deck in this video, which has blown my mind because I just thought this card was gonna be pretty mediocre at best. Even looking out at Marvel Snap Twitter today, amongst all the like bugged spotlight caches and other chaos, the missed patch today, Marvel Snap's having a bit of a meltdown overall. People are not very hyped about US Agent. So many people didn't get this card so far and those who did are reporting pretty mediocre results. So everything is kind of pointing towards this card being uh, pretty weak in most people's perception. And yet, in this deck, he seemed like a really great piece of the puzzle, fusing him here with the Affliction side of the High Evolutionary Evolved cards. So, you know, usually when we see High Evo decks, they have uh, at least Cyclops as a part of this package, but often cut Thing, who afflicts enemy cards. They often cut Abomination for those discounts. It's more about the big crazy stats of Hulk and now Red Hulk and so on. So taking the kind of low end of the high evolutionary package because US Agent also afflicting things, that gives you even more ways to discount this Abomination. I also put Spider Woman and Man Thing in the mix here as well for just like the full commitment. I almost thought this was kind of like halfway a meme theme deck more than a real deck but it just keeps working. And I, I I don't know for sure, of course. Number one, there's just not a lot of data yet. This may not actually be any good as more data rolls in. Number two, and perhaps more important for this video, I don't know how influential US Agent has been, but there are gonna be a few very clear examples of his significant impact in this video. And I think there are gonna be other examples where his impact was not visible, but perhaps still felt and still contributing to the win rate more than we realize because it was kind of silently discouraging my opponent's plays or forcing them to play suboptimally in other places. And sometimes you just don't have visibility on that sort of thing for this card. So basically creating locations where it's difficult for them to play big stuff, creating locations where it's difficult for them to play small stuff, can kind of just create chaos and frustration where the opponent feels like they don't have good choices or good math. And then, you know, sometimes just battering them down with power. And that surprise spike from Abomination too can be a really big deal, helping you to secure locations because this thing gets discounted crazy effectively in this deck, as long as the opponent doesn't have Luke Cage. Obviously, if people run Luke Cage, if this were actually a good deck and got more popular, mirror matches might be a bit of a disaster sometimes. Everybody's like, no, I can't do anything my deck's supposed to do. So I don't know. I'm I'm like a little more hopeful and feeling a bit more promise for this card than most. I'm also excited to try him out alongside some other kind of disruption things, make a goose lane, make an agent lane and see what you can do sort of thing. So a lot more to try with this one, but uh, more hopeful than most. That said, still very early, still very small sample sizes on all this stuff. We'll need a lot more data to know if US Agent or this kind of deck is actually any good. But for now, I've got some pretty cool games to showcase what this card can seemingly pull off. Okay, Bar Sinister. Imagine the opponent loads up something huge and US Asia just sets it to zero, dude. Oh, I really want that. I really want that to be what happens. Uh, maybe not a ton of space mid, so maybe Scorpion goes right. That, you know, that may not happen. We'll see. Multiple man. Uh, when that comes back off of Phoenix Force, unfortunately, it will cost two, not four. We could see maybe some Nimrod sometime in this deck though, depending. Uh, let's go ahead and load up the Cyclops here. Unfortunately, you know, it's not gonna have time to really interact as we want. They're gonna destroy it this turn. And then we kind of need the Cyclo Cyclops hit the Phoenix Force technically, but given we're gonna have priority, none of this really works. Um, man thing's good, man. Spider Woman could be pretty nuts. They're gonna play the Phoenix Force here, right? And then they're just gonna go crazy clogging up. Uh, in that case, Man Thing will be pretty strong mid. I mean, it'll set the Phoenix Forces down to what, six each? Oh no, they don't play it here, okay. Oh, it's Shuri first. Oh my goodness. Does that give me any play? I'm like, with priority, a lot of this just doesn't really help, right? Debuffing these makes an A-bomb a bit cheaper. 
Well, no, that's not true because they're already. I mean, this is a more net power advantage, of course. Uh, let's see. I don't know. This feels like a big Phoenix Force. I wish I had a Shang Chi in that case. <gasps> it's the Nimrod, like we talked about. Um. So how does U.S. Agent interact with Nimrod here? Each Nimrod will lose twelve. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Is this enough to win against like Venom? Maybe if I float, it is. We get uh, 15 venom we think is is 13. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's enough anyway, probably, right? I mean, let's see, dude. I don't know. Is this US agent actually gonna carry against Nimrods? I don't know how many there are. Oh, they didn't destroy the Nimrods. Oh, well, that makes me a lot more sad. <laughs> These are way less likely to be big cards. I don't know what this is now. Because they played three things. There's no way this is like high cost, right? Maybe it's like Artabzola stuff with venom. I can't afford all that though. So I maybe mean, it's just Venom stuff. I don't know. Oh, oh, it is Venom stuff. Okay. Venom, unfortunately, though, only costs three. But it, wait, how small is the, how small is the Venom? He's three to start. Is that too small? Those Nimrods, unfortunately, go back to 10 when they move those, the thing. But is this just by any chance only going to be 12? It's only gonna be 12, which is a tie. Does that mean we just straight up? Oh no, this card's gonna win them the game. Wait, I have Cyclops though. What is that card? Cyclops and, oh, it's a man thing. We're, we're fine. We tie, no, we win, we win, we win. Yes, <laughs> she clutched it. Not in the way we expected, but that's insane. That's insane. <laughs> it debuffed the Nimrod here just enough to keep these Venoms in check, which made the Venoms 12 instead of like a billion, right? Oh my God, dude, perfect crazy math on that. That is wild. That is a weird way to win, but we take those. I love it, that's cool. All right, Nebula looking pretty good. Uh, left is fine. Yeah, it might be harder for them to play to that late to flip it. So they might have to rely on small cards, which, you know, maybe a man thing could punish. Maybe that means US Agent's gonna carry it elsewhere. Between Big House and US Agent, they might have only one spot for big stuff. And we kind of work our way elsewhere. I'm excited to play kind of like a US Agent, like, um, I don't know what, like a disruption deck, frustration deck, <laughs> where it's like Goose and US Agent and stuff. That's, that's, I think that's next on my list. I also wanted to look at like maybe C3 with US Agent. That seemed fun. Um, armor, okay. That's, that's also pretty good for Man Thing too, to be honest. Uh, currently no plays though. Oh, that's fine. Maybe Scorpion just to complement this a little bit if we think Man Thing's going mid. I'm kind of expecting maybe like a Shuri into something big here though. Uh, so so I don't know. Xandar might be gone. If they go Shuri in a big thing, if it's Vision, they could contest Vault. If it's not Vision, maybe Vault gets locked out to them. So Vault might be sort of a freebie to win. Let's see. We're not going to learn this turn about Shuri yet because it's turn three, but we'll see where it goes. Scorpion is technically a, 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 a doubled against any Shuri plays if that card's in hand already. <laughs> Shuri's a little worse even. Wave plus armor. Now that makes me think something like maybe a big boy is coming down. Now I'm a little more confused. I don't know. Did I talk earlier about putting man thing in big house? <laughs> I feel like I said I can support it with a man thing, which would make sense in a normal game state, but does not make sense in a big house game. Pretend that wasn't big house and it was a pretty smart comment, right? If it, when you see it, it's big house, it's not very smart. We know we've Luke Cage, so the, the US agent man thing double up here is fine. I don't know, Wave doesn't really make me think Shuri anymore, by the way. I'm thinking like Dr. Doom or Galactus or something. I don't know. Galactus right would be pretty nasty. It's just the big red Hulk, okay. So he is debuffed by agent. Which is nice. Uh, Spider-Woman. 
do we do we do we like spider woman right I... when it does have priority so this can connect but like they're clearly running some big cards um I mean, I can put an abomination there and it's bigger, but then this kind of makes my last turn a little bit weird because of like Luke Cage. I want to be, I want to be basically playing Luke Cage abomination, uh, Luke Cage abomination on the final turn. So I think it's spider Woman here on curve. I just don't know if it's big enough. It's not big enough. She's only 10 and that's 12. That's sad. It really is a Shuri Red Skull deck though. I didn't know they were running wave. That seems odd to me, I guess. Um, I mean, this is definitely enough to flip here, but I got to win both. Can they win this, though? It's like these decks are only strong. They're, they're just going to put a giant card here, right? I'm gaining what? Uh, plus 5, 14, 18, but I'm down by 6. Actually, 20, but I'm down by 6. So they need, they need, a, they need a, a 13 power card here to win, right? <gasps> Wait, Taskmaster's gonna get debuffed by a US agent afterwards. This is fine, we're big enough. We're big enough. Let's go, dude. Let's go. That's actually insane. Okay, cool. Honestly, Spider Woman helped too because, well, Spider Woman and Scorpion helped. They both debuff this by that makes this smaller. I don't know. Actually, the math maybe didn't matter here realistically, but US agent pushed negative six into this lane, dude. He was a two nine. That's crazy. Shadow King. Okay. Uh, let's keep that in mind. Uh, uh, oh, no, no. This is not from the opponent. This is random. I was gonna say if the opponent has this. It's kind of good against our affliction stuff, but they don't have this. Never mind. Uh, agent. Xandar people are usually good with going small and wide, so we want Agent somewhere else. It's hard to know where exactly. He definitely feels clunky as a turn two play. It's just like, where do I put him, you know? Which is unfortunately where we've had him most often, I would say, right? Luke Cage is just a little bit bigger and lets me play a man thing if they decide to contest Hala hard. I don't know if they will, but if they do, you know, it's um, a bit easier this way. Man thing, he, I don't I don't think they're going seven to hollow with a hope summers up. They obviously want to play here. Man thing usually pretty good against these kind of decks. So we'll just go man thing here. If they play enough, we'll just go spider woman two and dump on mid, I think. Um it would be kind of nice if they were big enough to have priority. Uh they will not be. Because of the Polaris. If this was anything else they would. Just so Spider Woman had more bodies. Spider Woman on the final turn might be better though, anyway. We could maybe do more like this. I don't know where this scorpion needs to live. I, I think rights where they're more likely to play to fill in, but you never know. Okay, we net a pretty big rock advantage here because there's his negative one and minus plus one. That's kind of cool. Magneto's annoying though. Where is my US agent at, bro? That's not very nice. I mean, I feel like I just want to win left, right? But mids... Usually this deck only has like one big card though. It might be hard for them to win mid. Like man thing's just a big difference. You know, we're at it by five. They play a five power thing here. It's really only, it's really only three, right? So, well, four or whatever. I think it might be hard for them to win here. Maybe we try to win with Spider Woman left. They might just decide to go full left. And since they have priority, Spider Woman's pretty good left. <sighs> Arrow? Oh, that's fine. That's just a bonus. Does that make all the difference? I guess I guess Spider Woman kind of made the difference anyway, almost, but not quite. No, it did make the difference. Let's go. The arrow helped. Yes. Nice. We called the shot, but they were bigger than I expected. These decks don't usually run arrow. I feel like usually Magneto is like their one kind of big card. By the way, US Agent might have made the difference here because they may have. They may have wanted to put a big card here and thought US Agent was too disruptive. Buy Frost, sure, sure, sure. US Agent, I mean, I think I think fine to play on two. I, I don't know where he goes, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't think he technically makes a lot of sense with Nebula. I think, I think people are more likely to play, you know, a few small things into Nebula. And then maybe just like one big thing later. So I think like a man thing is better in a nebula location, realistically. 
Um, Cyclops, yeah, we're not really playing off curve much for the Cyclops right now, but that's okay. He can still be beneficial. So they've snapped here on something. Machine World does make their collector better, so we definitely have to be careful about that. Um, man thing left looks like it makes sense right now. Just some small stuff. Kitty Pride keeps the Nebula in check. Natural counter there. Also scaling this collector a bit more. Actually, um, Luke Cage is pretty good play here, I would say, given the... Uh, Cyclops now it does maybe slow down this abomination a little bit man thing and Cyclops together probably kind of interact Wastefully with abomination regardless I don't know how much difference that makes but we have to ask ourselves like do we want to keep committing to mid or not? I mean man thing is really good It's really good. I kind of do to be honest Did this get hit with a negative no so so abomination can actually be even one cheaper. He'll be two. I could play a thing, but not a spider woman. Does US agent here lock down machine world? Like, do they only have a big card that wants to go there? Let's see, I don't know. Misty Knight, we're floating here for the Cyclops buff. White Queen is, maybe that wanted to go right. Who knows? Now they got an abomination, but it will be fully costed here. And they got a snow guard. Yeah, that man thing swing mid is crazy, dude. Crazy. Um, can I trust? I mean, I think they're usually just playing like a three and a three. I'm not expecting any like crazy, crazy swings here. Uh, would I rather float for Cyclops than play thing? Do they have to give mid? Do they flip mid? Because this is also a pretty good line. You know what I mean? Like this is not bad at all. Playing cards here does unfortunately buff the collector is the only thing. Maybe we just go strong here and trust the leads. Because if they play enough to win mid against Cyclops here, uh, they're not going to have enough to win right, are they? Or left. They do go fully right, which I guess means maybe we're okay left. I don't know. Let's see. Should be three fairly small things, I would think. Oh my god! They went for the Luke Cage, dude! You had taken OP for a completely unexpected reason. Would that have actually made the difference, though, I wonder? I'm not negatively impacted much. Although, yeah, Man Thing actually is a big swing if I if I lose Luke Cage. It's an enormous swing. Electro. So come on, Electro ramp deck. Um, that could be tough. I'm not great at only one card per turn, unlike a regular high evo deck, you know, those are actually great at one card per turn. Now, Sinister London might change things, though. That's pretty spicy. Give every card in their hand negative two. Let's go. Abomination is going to be free soon, hopefully. No! What? <laughs> That's for me. That's rude. I have Luke Cage, though, so we actually don't care at all. I'm mostly meme anyway. Uh, Cyclops into... Yeah, I think Cyclops first, right? We we probably still want US Agent. It seems very disruptive, potentially. This might be a deck that's, that's more reliant on big stuff. Um, Luke K... Oh! Debris... Might lock me out of Sinister London. I don't think so. In fact, will always lock me out of Sinister London if I play it mid, anyway. Let's go here. I'm just thinking, like... I only need one Luke Cage. So, like, is Agent plus Spider-Woman the best kind of bet for me? Probably... Cyclops should be pretty good. US Agent's pretty good against any big stuff in like a rampy deck. Oh, uh, yeah, opponent's done. Okay, I don't know. Was it the US Agent that made them done? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'll never know. I don't know. This might have sealed the deal. I don't... Maybe it was the Cyclops? I, I'm not sure. They knew that we had like Cyclops potential because of Misty Knight, but maybe the US Agent, maybe they were going to run like Do Dr. Doom, for instance. You know, maybe a ramp deck with like Dr. Doom plays and they were hoping to get, you know, a bunch of fives, but suddenly their fives are all twos and they know that they just can't beat twos or, or less with Cyclops. I, I bet it was really the US agent that sealed the deal. That's kind of wild. Okay, Muir Island, uh, generally we're really good, but missing our entire top five, uh, you know, cheap, five cheapest cards here. Uh, Missing a house, Lemuria though hurts a little. 
I mean, we can still play a Cyclops. It's no big deal. Although floating is looking increasingly difficult. Gamma Lab? Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll contest it. Yeah. The opponent has a Shang-Chi. It's really not the end of the world. We can just, um, you know, US, well, they don't have anything, so it's, uh, that's fine. Actually, Shang-Chi is really not that interesting. Oh, Gamma Lab went off before the Misty Knight, so the Hulk benefited. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Cyclops here will get going. I doubt there's a second card there, but we can play one off curve basically this game, especially with magic in tow. I wasn't sure if this deck wanted a magic, by the way. Oh, Luke Cage is the problem. I mean, not, you know, it's not inherently a problem, but it's kind of a problem. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's sort of a problem. We have like big numbers, but Abomination's gonna be very expensive. I guess playing off curve now doesn't really do anything. What am I, what, what is my goal here to play off curve? Not really, well, Misty Knight, I guess. Technically a goal, but not much of one. Um, yeah, let's just get stronger stats here. This debuffs the Hulk, but I can't get him out of, uh, can't get him out of Shang-Chi range because it's a stupid Misty Knight, so maybe not worth. Also debuffs a man thing. Does debuff, well, does not actually, de well, I'm saying all this with a loot cage in hand, so you know none of it matters. The, this this getting debuffed by t under Shang Chi would be the one thing that did matter, but I think still, um, unfortunately, doesn't matter here. So Shang Chi is really my biggest thought at the moment. Spider Woman's still like you know a nice big card. Could have had a good debris, I think, for the record. Um, that said, they actually filled up left already. Oh, this Wong is making me think about like hazmat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can we can we can we surprise them with the loot cage out of thin air? What's the follow up here? Absorbing man? Maybe absorbing man plus something. I'm thinking about a little bit of a power compliment here. So I mean, we're down two here because they think of the the, the hazmat. But but if we loot cage, like maybe we'll be fine. Ironheart would mostly go left. Oh, they did play something. Shang-Chi. Oh, it's just Surfer. Oh, okay. That's a problem. That's an issue. That's too big. All right, TVA. I mean, yeah, we're not bad at TVA necessarily. Scorpion or US agent is the question. Scorpion, I mean, US agent really only has one card ever that he would hit, so I don't think it's him. People usually play left on the first card, so if I want to net an advantage with a small card like Scorpion, I probably need to put him somewhere that's um, like this, right? Somewhere else. Cyclops into Luke Cage or Cyclops into Thing? I don't think we'll need Luke Cage in a thing, and I don't think Debris is better. I think Cyclops just being bigger is kind of nice. Um, Lady Sif being bigger than Cyclops, though, is a bit of a pain. It only sets up a tie with the Luke Cage, too, unfortunately. So Lady Sif hit um, Apocalypse, which definitely makes me think a little bit about... Could they have... Well, Mobius is only two. Dracula could be big, but could, of course, low roll like crazy. Um, this lets me tie mid, which sucks. Really want to flip. I'm sad. I'm really sad that the Cyclops didn't go toe to toe with a Sif. That's that's a big distinction. Uh, debris would tie here theoretically and give Cyclops an advantage because he can now push negative two and still ahead on Scorpion. The problem is if they play anything that buffs this collector, then debris no longer ties. You know, I could theoretically go debris right to hopefully net an advantage over like a Dracula here. Yeah, shoot. It just depends on this Dracula 100%. Oh, that's so annoying, dude. I don't know. Let's see. How big is the Dracula? Oh, just big enough. The Scorpion coming in clutch. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it looks like debris left would have lost, right? Because we would have only, uh, well, no, it would have, yeah, yeah, four to two would have beat the tiebreaker. 
uh because we would have been four to three mid okay yeah usa has been fun all right it's fine to play on two i think just like you know it just discourages the opponent at worst case or like makes math harder if nothing else shang chi gone okay we're pretty good at dodging shang chi in this deck anyway and by pretty good i mean like we're really good at <laughs> we're really good at dodging shang chi in this deck opponent's milling us out here i don't know what we lost there but nothing too key i'm sure debris is gonna clog them up quite a bit mid although we'd like to get a nebula down asap i think we also just have to spend energy efficiently here oh well dang dude this is beast okay well i mean the rock thing is still true a little clogged up but not much it'll be tough for them to win asgard we definitely could just rip the man thing now man thing mid is pretty good it, it man thing right does probably mean we win asgard guaranteed we could also do cyclops just to get one more float going. This gives us man thing float on five. Turn six is, I don't know. I'm not sure yet. Yeah, this is probably better. Just Cyclops float. If we lose Asgard, it's not the end of the world. We actually kind of have enough cards to work with anyway. Scorpion's gonna be fine because we have Luke Cage, no problem. Haivo is a great burn actually, but that means my deck is thing and abomination and they got either one of those uh, because we see the cable there. Okay, so this is a fantastic... Oh, we got the abomination. Nice, okay. This is a fantastic man thing. Like, it's just insane. Because these are all slow. Um, this deck doesn't... Well, they have a thing. So, agent would be really good against thing. They wouldn't want to play thing here. They'd probably want to play, like, thing here or here. Cyclops practically could carry mid, honestly, on his own. He's going he's gonna to create a six-point lead here this turn and then you know maybe maybe eight i think we're gonna have luke cage plus abomination i we, we'll probably just pass the nebula she won't do much my deck is empty so it's really just luke cage abomination so the agent i like, could hold down right really hard plus the luke cage could create like a bit of a surprise factor maybe okay there you go thing mid like we said this doesn't make sense right with us agent so is cyclops plus whatever gonna be enough to flip back you know I, I maybe it's just luke cage here and we use abomination because we think what they're gonna gain plus three that's six um in some ways we could maybe just give up left but i think we need to contest it right um their hand has five cards spider woman got discarded so we don't have to worry about spider woman i think all the stuff for me they've already played or destroyed right it was Cable got Scorpion and Thing. Yeah, so. Uh, I mean, I think in theory this is probably all right. Nine here is like a little risky how small or big this card might be. But if they play a big card here, I don't see how they're winning. I mean, man, I'm adding what? Three plus two is five plus two is seven. And I'm down by two. So a five point swing. They can't beat all. They can't beat all of these, right? They can't swing all of these. Shadow King is actually kind of nuts. Uh oh, is this enough? Oh, it's a tie mid. Oh my God, it's, that's enough though. A tie is enough, right? Because we're way ahead, right? Oh, maybe this was risky. I don't know. The Zemo was so big. Shadow King was a nut. <laughs> Honestly, way better than I thought. Resetting everybody was a big swing for a two cost. My thought was, you know, if, like you play a big enough thing here. Can you also play a big enough thing here? This was bigger than I thought for two. Uh, this was risky, maybe. I don't know. Abomination here probably would have made us 100% safe. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you know, like, of course, you know, it's nice to cover every location. That's great. That's a strategy that makes a lot of sense. But sometimes it's a little better to just shore up a close one, too. So it just depends on the game, the opponent, the cost. Okay, Dream Dimension uh, could hurt a Cyclops a little bit. Yeah, but I like our curve here. It's fine. Uh, even if, you know, even if Cyclops hits only once, I think he's potentially a pretty good card because, you know, you're getting a three six, which is a good stat line already. That's solid. And then you're also potentially, de de uh, you know, discounting your abomination. So there are some um, some notable upsides to Cyclops, even with only one round of cycles. Normally we'd kind of expect two rounds of cycles because we'd play like man thing on five, probably something else on four, but dream dimension, just changing that. It, it, we might still, we might still, I don't know. 
might get one on, on turn six as well. You can see this deck has no sixes, so Spider Woman sometimes can can open up another Cyclops cycle, which doesn't discount Abomination, of course, anymore, but still, still relevant. Angel left's cool for that Nebula, yeah. We could, uh... That's a really good spot for Man Thing. Also, probably a good spot for Cyclops, too, to be fair. Uh, maybe it's still Man Thing on four, and then we just kind of take it easy on five. Um, or maybe, uh, maybe it's just A-Bomb on five. He's going to be pretty cheap. Yeah. Because this Man Thing is going to connect super hard. Titan doesn't help us at all. Opponent sometimes does have like Red Hulk in these decks. I almost said Red Skull. I haven't done a Red Skull, Red Hulk combo just yet. Silk moving away, unfortunately, does mean Abomination gets one more expensive, sadly. But that's okay. He's still cheap. Um, Probably just put A-Bomb mid here. <clears throat> oh, I can actually play Misty Knight, too. Oh, that's a great bonus, actually. Okay. Still cheap enough. That's awesome. Oh, this was debuffed by Scorpion, so we're fine. Oh, nice. Never mind. Okay, I was wondering, like, why is he still so cheap? So that was good. I was thinking we had to have catch the man thing, but Scorpion helping us out. So next turn, I, I shouldn't really need a loot cage other than maybe man thing here. So this, this thing is kind of getting a little stranded. If I play thing right now, I do lose Cyclops, but boy, do I net a nice bonus here. So I can go loot cage into a bomb. Um... I have priority, so I would definitely want Thing to go here. I'm just, I'm worried we're not quite big enough if I do this. I'm also worried A-Bomb isn't really technically that much cheaper. I mean, he is, I guess, because, um, well, you know, Dream Dimension, but if I overcommitted left becomes the question, I think, at this stage. Elsa plus craven who's also debuffed importantly scorpion so this is definitely zero um oh my god dude oh, i really want to play luke cage though because it's such a big buff here do we need it if they like what, what, what if they play like a vision here for instance this usually forces this into craven which kind of helps the opponent a little bit it's almost like i want to do this and just like power through left you know like it's plus four puts us at 16 but vision is is 12 you go to 18 right oh but i have cyclops and misty knight which could mean maybe we're okay i don't know it's really vision number one it's probably smaller than vision usually yeah it's just kitty pride okay that is definitely fine and then oh they went for the Elioth mid but i didn't play mid we played right. I think we're fine, right? This seems huge with Silk gone. We're, we're just like enormous here. Um, yeah, nice. Big wins across the board, dude. Oh, dude, I love dodging the Elias. Uh, I didn't really, I honestly did not even consider it. It wasn't my plan. <laughs> just worked out well. <laughs> just worked out. The, the cool thing is like this deck gives you a lot of confidence because the power spike off Abomination's crazy. And the like just overwhelming, like you just batter people down with like man thing Cyclops combos. You know what I mean? Like this just makes you so confident because you're just beating them to death with negative power. You know what I mean? So you feel really confident here because you're just putting so many resources in. And sometimes they feel like committed to these resources even though they've lost them is the cool thing. I think it's almost like a psychological element where it's like, I've invested so much, I need to keep going into this. But you just keep battering them down and then, you know, Abomination's there to basically steal a second location. You got surprise factors with Luke Cage making math a little awkward. It's just, this deck just wins. Triss Skellion, okay. Um, probably not very useful, but the thing we have a one drop to dump, so we still draw real cards. That's, that's kind of the important thing half the time on these. U.S. Agent, uh, yeah, let's actually put him left. I'll tell you why, because I don't know. <laughs> it kind of makes sense that the opponent has a small card here. They might want to complement it with a big card later. You know, they have less space, may need to play bigger things. U.S. Agent kind of makes sense in that world, maybe a little bit. Uh, Debris is really good against Angela. That still lets me play Cyclops next turn. 
this may clog them out a little bit uh they haven't followed up yet so maybe not quite yet oh magic is kind of cool in a rock game just give cyclops way more time to interact um scorpion also better earlier but uh, i think i think cyclops plus man thing does the job i think we'll be okay man thing goes mid i don't have a loot cage yet i will say so some of this stuff like man thing that's symmetrical is a little bit more problematic at the moment i just got a lot more likely to find loot cage though thank you yondu don't play baron zemo and steal it for me though nice perfect we love it uh no i think this goes mid i hate not getting a buff on stark tower though it's kind of a lame i mean we know it's good here too we know it's getting at least yondu angela and rock but it feels like a little bit of overkill against Cyclops, doesn't it? <clears throat> like, I still need to win elsewhere. Maybe this turn is just a different line then. Could just be like high Evo, honestly, just to get a body down here and then save, you know. We, we still have turn six and turn seven, so we still have a lot of energy. So like Luke Cage, Scorpion on, on six to float again if needed for Cyclops. Probably needed because I think Jeff will chill there, which is another good reason to make sure we hit Cyclops every turn. I just sort of hate playing high evo here. Oh my god. Uh, I don't even know what we get. Uh, what was that? Well, man thing's pretty good there, but electro sucks. Well, I only have two spots to play in two turns anyway, so maybe electro doesn't suck. Maybe that's not true. The real problem though is the opponent's just ahead. I can tie with a loot cage, but that's all. Oh no, actually Misty Knight means I'm ahead now. Never mind. Scratch that uh yeah let's just wait i don't really expect disruption like i think i can just always play these two next turn maybe even spider woman's better sometimes <clears throat> no sunspot in this deck like you would normally see uh the zemo's getting a what thing pretty good luke cage denies it but it's just six you know or actually it's just three kidding us agents insane so with that jeff there luke cage no longer flips mid right we're only gaining plus four so i don't know luke cage isn't necessary anymore although we do have um well i didn't even realize this wasn't my high evo we do still have high evo he oh i can only play dude oh my god i forgot i can only play one card Oh no, I'm actually screwed. I forgot I can only play one card. I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. I forgot I can only play one card, dude. No, I'm so dumb. I forgot. I forgot I can only play one card, bro. No, I'm dumb. I'm dumb. I'm so dumb. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you're just good enough, dude. <laughs> I, oh my god, dude. I forgot I can only play one card. I forgot. 